GGB learned that Jim Lesrith was leaving the chamber, we knew that we needed to do something very special. Uh, we were hoping to bring together a group like this, so we're kind of thrilled that that was able to happen. You know, there's something magical about San Francisco, even though we may have very different ways of approaching things. We might be small business, big business, community organizations. There's something about the beat of this city that we all come together. We can disagree, we can agree, but we find a way to create community and build business. Um, Jim is very much a part of that and always has been and is kind of a cornerstone. So thank you for showing with your presence that this is who we are and what we do. Um, I have had the pleasure of speaking with many of you this evening uh, before this program, and it's really inspiring and quite wonderful to hear each person's personal experience of how much Jim means to them, what Jim has done for them personally and professionally across the broad spectrum of San Francisco business. Um, really a giant and a gift to this city and to small business and business in general. Um, just a quick <coughs> note, GGBA, uh, the GGBA has always been very grateful for the friendship and relationship and support that Jim has given us. Um, even most recently, some of you may know that it, with the change of administration, uh, we, we, we noticed that the resource page for LGBT business on the federal website had been struck. And when we reached out to Jim in his role as public policy to ask some advice and some support around how to respond to this, he was an amazing advocate. And within 72 hours of that work together, the resource page was re-put up on the federal website. So just one very small example of the, the influence, power, advocacy, friendship, and business development that we personally as a chamber have experienced with Jim. Um, I could say a lot more, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I, uh, it's actually my pleasure to bring up this evening Gwen Kaplan, who is a, um, a, a three-generation business owner, uh, a family business owner. I, I really should have taken your advice on the short sentences, Michael. <laughs> Gwen is the owner and founder of Ace Mailing, a third-generation family business right here in the Mission. Although that was one long sentence that worked. Um, so, and Jen, uh, Gwen is going to talk a little bit more about the um, how we call the overall business community. So, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and my job this evening is to talk about how Jim has influenced the business community as a whole. And um, I think we have to say that this is a room in which everybody knows everybody. So there's not a lot that I can say other than that, but um, he has been very instrumental in helping big business, small business, medium-sized business, and everything having to do with San Francisco and California. So um, here, here, Jim. <laughs> I do have one short personal story. When I first became involved in public affairs uh, here in San Francisco, Jim sort of took me under his wing. And so we were to gathering, very much similar to this one, a networking group. And um, I was talking with Jim, and I noticed that he was moving a little bit. <laughs> and I thought, well, he's not moving away from me. <laughs> but I was following him just like this. And he said to me, Gwen, when they start talking on the microphone, our job is to go to the food table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. So anyway, I'm going to pass the microphone on. But um, anyway, this is <laughs> he's going to the food table right now. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Audrey. Oh, I want to mention our sponsors. Good grief. What a big job that I didn't do. So we want to thank the GGBA, the Mark Hopkins, the International um, uh, Mark Hopkins, the Chamber of Commerce, BOMA, Cal Insurance, the Hotel Council of San Francisco, the San Francisco Association of Realtors. We have Dignity Health 
and we have jobs and Wells Fargo. So, and every business group in the city is also supporting organizations. So thank you very much. So we decided that we would actually have some FOJs speak tonight. In fact, a um, friend of Jim uh, is that. So I want to um, bring to the table, uh, Marshall, Marshall, are you here? I am. Okay, Marshall, here we go. Friend of Jim from many, many years. I am indeed a FOJ. Uh, Jim and I go back to the day when we both wore short pants. Uh, same elementary school, same year, uh, same kind of look, but he's weathered better than I. <laughs> Most of us collected baseball cards, that kind of thing. Jim collected city charters back then. <laughs> and, you know, the payroll gross receipt tax was probably a better thing to, to collect. <laughs> I'm toasting him, right? I mean, he got way ahead of me on this deal. Anyway, uh, I later caught up with him, I guess, many months later. He was the Board of Supervisors, day-to-day -day lawyer, calling balls and strikes at Monday meetings. I was a city hall reporter for the Chronicle. He then moved on to, uh, to be the sort of Board of Supervisors, well, the city hall kind of uh, labor management guy, the guy who would negotiate contracts with the unions. I'm sure you're all gonna love this one. Uh, and he, uh, at the time, the city hall had about a, I'd say a four or five billion dollar city budget, 15,000 workers. Now it's, what, 11 billion dollars, 30,000 plus. I don't think Jim put the stopper in the bottle on this. <laughs> it, could be, it could be a lot worse. Anyway, uh, now he's moved on to a new job, semi-retirement for a semi-retired senator. And he, <laughs> He can explain. He can explain what the difference between Delano and uh, and Hanford soon, soon to follow. Anyway, uh, but one of the things in the media game, which I'm a longtime hopeless member of, is you need a third grapher. You need a quote meister. You need a guy who can make your story true. And when all the Bigfoots fly in from you know, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the LA Times, even the Chronicle where I work, you need that guy who can make your story kind of come alive. You write the lead paragraph, you write the second paragraph to make it a little uh, easier to understand. Then you need a live person. You need somebody who can deliver the message, kind of while you're writing the damn thing, with some concision, some life, some blood. That's Jim. And I don't know what the city's gonna do <laughs> when we don't have this guy to help us understand a lot of big issues, economic issues, trends, uh, a goofy new California and San Francisco law, uh, a change in uh, San Francisco's kind of image and style. Uh, I'll be around after the meeting if anyone wants to sign up for that job. But that was Jim's between the lines job at the chamber. And I think it's, it's a very important one because he had a lot of credibility, he had a lot of honesty, he understood city history, he understood kind of what made things tick. I mean, the guy born and raised here, his kids went, kids went to school here, his wife's from here, he ain't leaving, he gets it. He's part of us. And another, not, I'm, I'm sounding like a media greedy guy here, but another thing to remember about Jim is he's kind of an optimist. He looks ahead. What is it that we need to think about in six, 10, 12, 50 months? What is it that, you know, kind of lifts us up and look forward to? Not who's going to win this thing tomorrow. Who's going to? What's the six-five vote of the board of supervisors? What's the ballot measure coming? We got to be fearful of. These are all things that lots of people talk about. But Jim has a way of remembering kind of history, bringing it alive, reminding us that you know cities are longer lived than those short-term wins. And I think that's that's kind of a lot we're gonna be missing and kind of the value that Jim served so many years in providing, and I think that's important. And uh, here's my toast. Um, before I turn it over to Janice McKenzie, I do wanna also thank uh, the incredible sponsors, aside in addition to Dignity and um, Committee on Jobs, we really, it was really marvelous. But first and foremost, there are 16 different 
uh, the San Francisco organization supporting this event tonight. That does not happen in any other city. So congratulations <laughs> to San Francisco. I do want to thank Beaumont, and we've got the San Francisco Chamber, and Cal Insurance, and the Hotel Council, and the San Francisco Association of Realtors, and of course GGBA, and Michael Pace, and the whole entire team here. I mean, this really was a community activity. And we all need a strong Chamber of Commerce. And we just absolutely need that. We need the Restaurant Association. We need absolutely everybody at the table. So I want to introduce Janice McKenzie, who has had a great, wonderful working relationship with Jim, to say a few words about our award, and then we'll turn them over to Jim. Okay. Wow. I think I probably know 90% of the people in this room and the 10% whom I don't know. Um, it is so nice to meet you and for all of us to be here to honor Jim. And on behalf of the chamber and our board, I'd like to ask all of our former, previous, and current board chair, John Gingrich, I see Wade Rose, I see Bob Corrigan, uh, I see Mary Huss, who else do I see out there? Peter Grubley, would you join me up here because we are all part and parcel of thank you, Jim, on behalf of the team. All right, board chairs, you can't hide. Come on up. Um, all right. Well, I think that we all know that Jim is the consummate expert and San Francisco insider. And to quote one of Jim's favorite phrases, he is beyond unbelievable. <laughs> He's beyond unbelievable in his knowledge of City Hall, the City Charter, who's who, or who was who. <laughs> That's He's beyond <laughs> unbelievable in his dedication, his work ethic, his loyalty to his friends, his sense of community, and his representation of our business community. It has been absolutely extraordinary and will continue to be so. We don't consider you semi-retired, Jim, regardless of what Marshall says. <laughs> I think we can all agree that they don't make many Jim Lazaruses, and they probably won't make another. Uh, Jim is a fourth generation San Franciscan, and that's a feat in and of itself. And while those of us in this room may know Jim as Mr. Public Policy, I can tell you he's also a doting grandfather who can coo with the best of them. <laughs> and he's the proud father of four very, very successful kids. And the lucky husband of Anne, who is probably one of the most accomplished and successful women in San Francisco. <laughs> and so Jim, I can say to you, you've done okay. <laughs> so James, Leon, Lazarus, we'd like to honor you tonight with an expression of appreciation from the chamber and from the business community. It's a small token of our appreciation because I'm not sure how we can really say thank you enough for everything you've done for all of these years. Jim. Now, John Gingrich promised that he would help me present this award to you as our 2019 chamber chair. So come on over here. Uh, this is a beautiful award, but I'm not sure I can pronounce all of the words that are written on this. Especially with that glass. Oh, right, okay. So I'm gonna try and don't hold me accountable if I stumble. For your inestimable knowledge of public policy and political affairs, your indefatigable advocacy of San Francisco's business community. How's that boy or am I doing there? And your ability to cite the subtlest aspects of the city charter, the business community of San Francisco honors Jim for 13, and I think it actually might be 15 years as Senior Vice President of Public Policy for the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. And I say 15 because Jim did two stints. He is a brave, brave man. Thank you very much. Uh, first thing, thanks to the hotel and your staff 
take a look. This is a great room, and I appreciate it when Paul said they, they had this room for tonight. There's Father Sarah up there, and I know it's all controversial, and he, he was taken out of the statue by the library, by the city, but on my mother's side, there's a Spanish soldier with Father Sarah at the founding of the Carmel Mission, probably replicated in that picture there. So fourth generation San Franciscan, but way, way back to Spanish Indian days on my mother's side. And so this is a fitting room to have this semi-retirement event. <laughs> um, what it really said over that unbelievable was some issue at the Board of Supervisors nine, 10 years ago, and Marshall Kildup's cohorts at the Chronicle, somebody caught me and wanted to comment about this ridiculous ordinance. Could one, one of many. And all of it came out of my mouth was this, the, the, the proposal was beyond unbelievable. <laughs> well, at that time, Steve Falk, the former publisher of the Chronicle, was the president of the chamber. And he came in the next day and said, Jim, what the heck can be beyond unbelievable? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that got painted onto my forehead. Uh, but what was really above the, the office for public policy at the chamber was I delay the inevitable. <laughs> that was really, I wanted to keep for these 13 years expectations managed and under control. And I think with all of you and our partner organizations, we've done that. And I think if there's any kind of leave behind is that we work together, we're all at the table, whether it's micro business to the biggest businesses, we try to speak with one voice, doesn't always work, you don't have to go back to the November election. If it's obvious that sometimes it doesn't work, but most of the time it has worked and we have been able to work through a lot of issues together uh, with bringing the strength that's in this room from the professional staffs, the boards of organizations, and your members. And that's really the only way it can work in San Francisco. And uh, I'm happy that I was able to play a role the last 13 years of bringing people together again trying to form a business community that was cohesive on the public policy side. And uh, I, I thank you for taking some leadership from the chamber, participating, and looking to the chamber to create that model, which I hope worked. Uh, to my family, um, uh, they put through, you know, the joke was how many pensions have I had and all these jobs, and, you know. Yes, I worked for the city a number of times, but it's only 12 and a half years cumulatively. You don't get rich off of that pension. And, you know, now I'm back with the feds. A few years might help there on that uh, You know, there, there are been a, a number of jobs and a number that I've rotated through, twice in the mayor's office, twice at the chamber, now twice with Senator Feinstein. And, uh, uh, please do not talk about semi-retirement with Senator Feinstein. <laughs> this will not work. I will get in trouble for this, you know. Uh, but I will say when she's in Washington, there's a certain tr truth to that. It, uh, <laughs> so come on by one post street, 24th floor. We'll have a cup of coffee or maybe a drink later in the day. Because uh, she's not in town. The, work, the workload is manageable. Uh, <laughs> But I did spend three hours today looking at SFGov TV while sitting at my desk as the Board of Supervisors struggled to find votes to elect the president of the board with that division within the, that wonderful division within the progressive slot. Um, and I'm happy to be at the Feinstein office and not having to But uh, to my chamber staff and, and that I've worked with for the last 13 years, uh, to Juliana who stepped forward in a big way now to to move the organization forward during another transition period. Mary Young, who uh, worked directly in public policy, and all the other organization leaders here. I appreciate working with you. I appreciate you taking the time to do this, to put this together, and not just honor me, but honor the chamber, and honor all the business organizations that have come together to try to make sense of it. And let me just say, I think we have. I mean, you know, the economy was good in 2006, not as great as it's been now, but good. A great recession, you know, 4% unemployment became almost 10%. You know, city in, in you know, dire financial straits. Um, but look at the change, and, and look at that focus on a knowledge-based economy, the visitor industry, things like medicine. Uh, I, I do say, you know, we've gotten a we're moving this city forward in population growth, 
record job growth, record tax revenues, but looking ahead, as somebody said, we need a balanced economy, and that's what you reflect in this room. I mean, losing companies out of town for a variety of reasons, and they're not all fleeing because of high costs, but there's different reasons that Bechtel consolidated in the, the Washington, D.C. area, or McKesson, or you know, the threats to PG&E, or whatever. Those are companies that employ middle-class people. And we need that balance. We need to see what we're gonna do to reinvent retail. We need to see what we're gonna do to continue the strength with the new Moscone Center for the visitor industry, but also what we're gonna do for the, the types of jobs that everyday folks can earn a good living and afford to live maybe in the city, but certainly in the Bay Area. And that's what San Francisco needs to focus on, and that's what you do here in this room, and that's what I know, just speaking in my current job, Senator Feinstein would certainly allow me to participate in to try to make sure we move that economy forward. So thank you, and uh, have a good time today. for the 16 plus organizations that have come out to celebrate Jim tonight um, and to our sponsors for making this event possible. Uh, now please raise a glass to Jim. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you.